So we are going to start with a glass vial, which has a lid on it. And so we are going to take the mass of that um, and essentially tar it so that we could get our uh, starting um, substance in there. So we're going to mass out about 1.5 grams of the salicylic acid. And it is a white powder uh, and it's a little flaky. Uh, so you do want to be careful when you're putting it into the vial. So you will see I'm using a very small uh, spatula and you don't want to use too much because again the opening of the vial is pretty small. So you will see me struggle with getting it into the vial and not getting it everywhere. And so you're going to mass out approximately 1.5 grams, 1.5 grams. And you want to record that in your data table. So now we have the salicylic acid in the vial. So now we are going to put our second component, which is the acetic anhydride. So that is a liquid, so I need to pipette that. So I'm going to add about three mils of the acetic anhydride. And you're going to see me use, uh, so that's the acetic anhydride, and I'm going to use a pipette. I'm going to uh, bring the liquid up to the two milliliter mark and then I'm going to dispense to the five millimeter mark. You will not be able to see it very well in this video. So you will see the two possibly up on top. So I'm sucking it up to two and then I'm going to dispense it to five so that I know it's exactly three mils. Um, I don't want to dispense through the pipe, the end of the pipette because it may not be exactly one mil. Uh, so that is why I will go between two and five. And you will see I will put the remaining back into the original container, which is probably not good format, uh, but we are trying to conserve materials. So now I need to add my catalyst. So that's going to be the sulfuric acid. So I'm going to add about five drops. And if you add more than five drops, that's going to be fine. So you, I just put them directly into the vial, directly into the vial. And then what is important is that you mix the vial. So you will see me screw the cap on. Make sure it doesn't leak at this point. Uh, we don't want it leaking out into our hot water bath. Uh, so you will see me shake it quite often here because I want to make sure that everything has been mixed. You are then going to use this copper wire to essentially hold the vial in the boiling water. So that's why you will see a little hook on the end of it. And we're going to hook it to the side of the beaker and put it into the boiling water bath. We're going to put it into the boiling water bath. So you will see a rolling boil at this point. You want to start your timer. And you want to make sure that you are going to boil it for a good 10 minutes. Um, about 10 to 15 minutes is going to be what you need for the um, process. So now we need to take the vial out. So we're going to use a crucible tong and put it off to the side. And the camera will pan over there in a second for you to see it. We want to leave the vial out for about a minute or so. It's mostly so that you can touch it because you're going to dispense that into your ice water. So in that test tube, I have 20 mils of cold distilled water in an ice water bath. And so I'm going to uh, take all of that liquid that is in the vial and pour it directly into the 20 mils of distilled water. And <clears throat> after I have dumped it into the test tube, I will then rinse it out a few times with cold distilled water, cold distilled water. So you will see it turns a cloudy, that is the aspirin that you have produced. You're using cold water to have a big temperature change. Uh, sometimes that um, allows the substance to what we call crystallize or go to solid. So that is why we're using cold water since it was just in the hot water bath. So that difference there is going to make the crystals form. So that's why I'm um, mixing it multiple times to make sure that I have nothing remaining in my vial and get all of the aspirin into that test tube. You will then have the test tube sit for at least five to 10 minutes. I would say a good 10 minutes in the ice water bath to make sure that it crystallizes.
So now this part will be showing you how to filter the aspirin. So this is my aspirin in the test tube. And this is a Bruckner funnel. And it is going to use suction from the expulsion of the water there. So there's some suction there. So we're going to put it on what we call a sidearm flask. So it looks like a sidearm. And into this funnel, we're going to put a particular kind of filter. So this is the filter we're going to use in the funnel. And so the aspirin is going to end up on that. So I need to put a, I need to know the mass of the filter and the watch glass. So that is why you will see in the data table, there is a place for the watch glass and the filter. Now I'm going to take my aspirin and pour it into the funnel. So I'm going to take my filter and put it in the filter, the Bruckner filter, and then I'm going to pour the aspirin in there. Uh, you can have the water going, so you could have the suction going at the same time, but gravity will take over and we'll start to pull it through there. And then you want to rinse it multiple times. The test tube itself, it still has some of the aspirin in there. So you're going to use cold distilled water again. You don't want to have any difference in temperature. And you just want to squirt it in there and get as much of that solid out of that test tube and pour it into the funnel. So pour it into the funnel. So you want to do this multiple times just to make sure that you don't leave any aspirin behind because you will be judged on your percent uh, yield in this lab. So that's why you mix it or rinse it a few times. So now you will see again that is my aspirin on top of the filter and I will let the suction take over until it's uh, relatively dry but then I will need to take that filter out of the funnel. So what you want to use is kind of a plastic spatula and you want to kind of dig it out of the funnel and then lay it nicely onto your watch glass. So it does take a little bit of um, patience to kind of lay it out. And what you will see is it might look a little wet at this point. So the reason we do not take the mask that first day is because it is still wet and we don't want to know the mass of the water we want to know the mass of just the aspirin so that's why we will wait a day to take the mass